morning, everybody. I'm here with Scott Thompson, uh, candidate for Orville City Council, uh, running for re-election. And we're here to do the uh, candidate interview questions, the same ones we've done with the other candidates. Uh, we're just going to get straight into this. How are you feeling this morning, Scott? Feeling great. Thanks for having me on. Uh, no problem. Let's, let's do this. Okay, so the first question is from Janet Weaver, and she would like each candidate to be asked, how would you measure a successful team in an office under which circumstances show you oh and, and under which circumstances should you be removed from office uh, I would say number one a successful team would be a team that uh, has every voice or every different area of town represented but also which those different individuals have an open ear to have a dialogue you know, because we all have different opinions and thoughts. And some people think that city council should just all get along with stuff, and I completely disagree with that. You know, we're there to have discourse. We're there to have debates. We're there to have discussions. We're there to disagree <clears throat> and then find common ground. Uh, I think with our nation, we need a lot more of that. Uh, people, if you, it seems like in today's day, <clears throat> that if you disagree with somebody, you have to bash them personally or push them down and... I completely disagree with that. I think that, uh, in fact, I'm intrigued by people who have a different worldview than I do. Uh, I think some of my world travels, you know, it gets that where I actually enjoy meeting and talking with people that have a different opinion than I do, as long as they can take me from how they come from point A to point B, how they can train a thought. If they just, if they're just like, well, this is the way it is, and they just aren't open to debate, dialogue, that's frustrating. Uh, so I think a successful team are those who come from different backgrounds have that diversified because Orville is diverse. You know, we have a lot of different um, beautiful cultures here in town. So I think it is important to have, again, uh, different voices, but then from there, being able to have successful discourse uh, without slandering or, you know, pushing each other down. Uh, in which case should a person be removed from office? Well, if they are lying, if they are mis- representing themselves, you know, obviously, if a person has to be louder, <laughs> obviously, if a person um, is doing something that is completely dishonest, if you communicate to your constituents, if you like motorcycles, <laughs> if you communicate to your constituents, hey, vote for me, I am for A, B, and C, and then you get brought into office, and you about face, and you show that actually going to be pushing for your own personal agenda and you're completely lying for, you know, you, you false advertise yourself, I think it's the citizen's responsibility then to recall. Just like the same way you, you buy a car and you think you're, you're buying something and then after you buy it, all of a sudden you realize it's not what you're getting. You, know, you have the obligation to hopefully take it back. Like, um, excuse me, this is, this is not what I ordered. So um, I think that's, that is a situation where um, people should actually recall or say, okay, you're not, well, you aren't what you said you were, so you need to come, come back off that. All right. Okay, next question is from Inocencio Gonzalez. Uh, what are the plans on homeless taking over city parks with vandalism and graffiti, plus how to control trash and needles and um, waterways, in the waterways left behind by them? Great question. Uh, that's one of the main questions that I've heard from not only our residents, but our business owners. <clears throat> and um, one thing I'll just share, because that's, a, that's not a new issue. It's something that's been going on here in or or Oroville for a long time. It is a complex issue. Um, and first of all, I want to say that it's not just homeless that are causing problems in town. You know, I'm, I, we have a church, as you know. And last year we had four people vandalize our church property. Like, who vandalizes the church? Anyway, there was four individuals. Uh, we had bought, had bought cameras and put them around the church. Um, and we had uh, three out of the four that, you know, we got high def, so their faces were caught and OPD was on top of it. And they arrested three of the four. The fourth one they get because he actually came up with a mask. Um, but he didn't, you know, the moment he broke in, the alarm went off. But, uh, the other three, two out of the three, were not homeless. There was only one. So, you know, of the three that were caught, one-third 
one of the three was homeless, where the other two actually had homes. And so it isn't just homeless. Or, let me just clarify that. It isn't just homeless. So what we've done before when I got there, the city was running under a deficit. So our scale, our police officers that was on a skeleton crew. They weren't able to, it was going from call to call to call, not necessarily able to go after those who were causing problems. And so I'm really proud of our police department. Uh, I think that uh, what not only... Uh, Legrone did when he was there, but now with um, Chief Deal on there, man, I'm so proud of him. And you know, even just recently hearing business owners talk about the response time here in town, our police department is doing a great job. But anyway, what I'm proud about is the pop team. Uh, Chief Deal's uh, with help with our city council and our staff has developed our pop team, which is, as I'm sure you've heard, is it's a multi-jurisdiction, <coughs> multi-department group that made up of our, our police officers, made up of our municipal law enforcement and our code enforcement. And their task, and speak louder because the truck's going to go by. <laughs> wow. But their task is to specifically go after those in our city who are constantly causing problems. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but recently flights have been starting to clean up. Uh, areas that have been uh, overrun with people who are setting up camps, those areas have been flattened just right there in the Gateway Project, you know, right on Montgomery and Highway 70, you know, that's all been flattened, cleared out. They have been going to these areas where individuals have been camping on private property and saying, hey, listen, this is private property, we've had a complaint, you need to leave or you'll be arrested. And literally they stay there and they either wait for them to leave or they arrest them and take them to jail. And uh, so they're, they're doing those things constantly. There was even, even recently there was an uptick in, um, uh, car thefts and so uh, the pop team got right on it they said well, well this guy if he is out of jail we need to <laughs> we need first and see if this guy's out of jail because he's constantly you know, he, has a, he has a reputation in town stealing cars he was out of jail so they went to his last you know his known locations found him he was in a stolen vehicle they um, anyway long story but they end up it did apprehend him and so these are things that now our pop team can go after to actually clean up our town um, it isn't just you know going after one demographic of people, whether they're homeless or not homeless. It's going after those in our town who are constantly causing problems. And so uh, it's just the beginning of that. You know, there it's still in the beginning stages. But I'm really proud of Chief Deal. I'm really proud of our city council and the support that we've given to him to develop this to see our town you know cleaned up because that's the reason why. Uh, the citizens voted for Measure U. It's like, we want our city safe and clean. And so the city council listened to that. And uh, this is one of the programs that we've developed with our staff to clean up the town, make it safe. Excellent. Okay, uh, the next question is from Liz Bellier. Uh, how will you personally foster a climate of respect and teamwork in which people can disagree but still arrive at solutions for the city? I think I've touched on a little bit. But um, having a listening ear to, uh, I, I hope that whoever gets into city council has a listening ear, and that's the main thing. I don't have to agree with you, but, it, but at least to listen to you and have some, some sort of compassion to understand that, hey, listen, you may have a different worldview than I do, different opinion than I do, um, but I want to hear what you have to say, and hopefully you can take me on a journey of how you arrived at that conclusion. Perfect. Okay, next one is Larry Tracy. What will they do to bring jobs to Oroville? Okay, well, first of all, uh, I am more of, of a libertarian, so I don't believe that the government does a good job at creating jobs. I think the government should um, more get out of the way. I think that uh, those in political power have, you know, have ability to resist, you know, growth and resist businesses come to town, which I have, heard so many stories from business owners who've been around Aura for a long time <laughs> that uh, previous staffs had had the attitude of just kind of pushing business out of town. And that's one of the reasons actually why I stepped up because I saw the disconnect between uh, business owners and the city council. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. Um, so I saw a disconnect there, and that was one of the reasons that spurred me on to be on city council. So to bridge that gap to where when businesses come to town, it's like, we want businesses to come to town. We want businesses that are in town to be happy to do business in town. Instead of having the, you know, us versus you mentality, or we're up here, you down there, and, you know, you can, you, you can still work within the state of California 
um, codes and whatnot, but there's two different attitudes you can work with somebody and just kind of like have a, a stonewall approach to somebody or um, you know welcome them and hey, what can we do? How can we work together to see you succeed? Because if businesses succeed, that means jobs, that means tax revenue, that means we have tax revenue, that means we can fix our streets, we can hire more police officers, more code enforcement. So it, there really ne needs to be a good positive a relationship between uh, the public and private sector and uh, it has been one of my top priorities to do just that to um, you know when businesses come to city council to listen to them and do my best to advocate to see them succeed in town so you got to take care of those in town and then once you and so the his answer is what do you do to bring businesses in town so if you take care of those that are in town business owners know other business owners and so if your current business owners are unhappy you can do all the you know, trying to get new business in the town, but they're going to eventually talk to other business owners. So if you take care of, continue to take care of it, as much as within your power, uh, your current business owners, uh, they're going to spread the word just as way you have a restaurant. If you take care of your, your patrons who come in your restaurant, you give them a good meal, then they're going to tell, hey, go eat at Joe's. Go eat at the exchange. Great food. <laughs> Okay, that's all we have time for today. Thank Great. you very much, Scott. Uh, we'll post this out to the 365, and uh, good luck in your campaign. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, have a good day.